Welcome to the Art Tutor. Today we are critiquing a still life composition that was submitted by Kenford Paul. And as always, students are asked to submit work in three stages. The construction stage, which is the first stage here. And this looks like the second stage. Here we're putting in the values to create three-dimensionality and that is the final composition so a couple of things before we move forward again when you submit work like this with a spiral binding of the sketch pad in the end here that takes away from that is that necessary do you need that that's not the focus and as I, I've, I've done before and I'm gonna do this in your case all you need to do is to go to the video edit the, the photo editor and all you do is this and when you do this you let me know if it takes away from your composition because based on what i see what it does it enhances the composition it doesn't take away from the composition if we move to the other piece it's the same thing you would have done here when you're doing your photographs remember that these pieces will be used in a virtual exhibition and as it is right now the fact that you didn't take out the spine and this one especially is going to affect what's going on because when we come here we might need to crop till about here for this to make sense because if we don't we're going to have the, the the shadow being the cast shadow from that spine there so we're going to cut this here and i'm going to take the liberty to cut this and the reason why i'm doing this is for you to see the importance of editing your photos in terms of ensuring it's square before you send it in i emphasize this in the in the um on the stream in the classroom and to be still receiving and dealing with this at this stage is kind of disappointing look at the difference so you were telling me the advice that i would have given to you makes no sense you can just slap a photo take a photograph and do whatever you want and just send it in just like that and that's good enough I would have deliberately cropped these so you can see the big difference that it makes in your work. Please, let's not have to go through this again because this is too basic an error to be making at this stage so consistently. The information was given to you and it was stated why you have to do it that way. I didn't just say do it for and, and with, without providing an explanation. I would have said it makes a better presentation and number two when we are going to mount these things in a virtual exhibition if you have those things that you are just now it's going to really take away from the work and the work is what we want to focus on okay so i hope that this is clear and we don't have to go back over this again because the next time you are submitting work for me to assess and i see that i'm going to be very i will be very harsh on you in terms of taking remarks The assignment here was to produce a still life composition with at least four objects and you were to be viewing the object the objects were supposed to be arranged in a position where you were uh, in a below eye level position which means that you're looking down at the objects in the composition when i look at your final composition you would have achieved that i get i get the sense that we are looking down at the objects in the composition and therefore you would have achieved that objective looking at the, the the fundamentals of the drawing process in terms of how you have utilized construction to ensure that the objects that are part of the composition are constructed properly uh, looking at how you have utilized shading to show the the color and the effects of light on the objects we're going to go through that in detail and see what are some of the things that you did well and where, where are some of the areas that you can um, work on improving from a construction point of view, I'm satisfied with what I'm seeing. Uh, you, you have a clear understanding of the nature of the objects that are part of your composition and you would have done a good job of, of constructing them. And, and if we go back to the initial sketch, I think we get a, a basic idea there. I can see you, you would have been working with some of your basic construction lines to guide you along. I can see you working on constructing the lips and ensuring that the line for the liquid in the mug is also representing in terms of the shape of the ellipse that represents the um the mug here so it's clear that you have an understanding of the 
construction phase of the objects that are part of your composition. When we look at the way you use your shading and the value scale to represent the way light affects the objects and the colors in the composition, there are some issues here that, that, we, that, that I'm seeing uh, popping out. Number one, in any given good still life composition, you have foreground, you have middle ground, and then you have background. In your case, the foreground is going to be around here. This is going to be your middle ground, and the fabric there is your background. Objects or parts of the composition that is closest to you would have more detail and stronger use of light and dark tones as compared to those sections of the composition that is further away from you. In this case, your foreground would have more detail in terms of the way you use your values as compared to your background. But when we look at what is going on here, that is not consistent. The strength of the values that you use in your background is calling more attention to you, to the viewers, to look at a background rather than the foreground. So if you have to be consistent with your shading, therefore, your cast shadow here from the fabric, the fold of the fabric, should have been darker. In fact, this here, this tone that you have here, you could have taken that and put this here, and it would have made a big difference. And all of these strong darks that you have here and strong cast shadows that you have as, like, as a result of the folds, you could have toned those down. The other question I'm going to ask, what is the color of the fabric? Because when you shade, your tones are supposed to give the viewers an idea of what is the color of the fabric or the value of the fabric in terms of whether it's a light-valued fabric or it's a dark-valued fabric. And when I look at yours, especially when I look at the area where the fabric is resting on the surface and this here looks like it's draping from somewhere, you have some inconsistency. Because if the light is coming from the left side, which is what you're suggesting based on how the light strike this teacup, if the light is coming from the right side, then, and if the fabric is the same fabric, why is it that these, this section in the background, the darks are so stronger than in the foreground and in the middle ground? It's a question that you're going to have to ask. And it's an inc it's, it represents inconsistency with the way you would have utilized your shading to show the effects of light in the object. The other thing that I'm looking at too, when you squint your eyes, you're struggling to identify the objects, clearly, especially this, this wear mug. It's blending into the background in some, some areas. Your cast shadows. Yes, it's a white teacup, but underneath here, and let's zoom in so I can make that point clear. To show where the teacup is resting, all of this here is supposed to be shadow. One straight line, because this is resting in the saucer, and if it's resting in the saucer, there's no light that's affecting that. But you start here, and then you let that slide. It's like light, 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 then it reappears back there. No, that's an error. To make that teacup rest firmly, you should have addressed that by ensuring that there's a dark tone straight across there. When we look at the teacup, the, the saucer, same thing. Underneath here, there will be no light because of the cast shadow. You see, you start your cast shadow here, but this cast shadow really is going to continue here too, underneath here. Because there is no light happening there. And you see what happens when, that, when you, you fail to put in those stones in the right places. Then things start to blend. So it's almost like the, it's not almost, the, the teacup rim is blending with the fabric. Can we see a little bit of it because of the reflective light kind of thing? Yeah, but you remember now, underneath here, underneath there, there's no light source happening there. So this here definitely should have been a dark line going all the way here. I need it to be a little more defined. 
if it's a white teacup why is this darkness or the cast shadow from the handle why is it so strong here it's a white teacup remember when you're shading you're shading to show light dark shadow and also the true color of the objects that are part of the composition a dark area on a light or a cast shadow on a, on a white teacup is not going to be the same as a cast shadow on a darker object let's say the, the, the spoon but the spoon and there is no cast shadow on the spoon so we really can't use that but you, you get the idea the white objects in your composition are going to stand out more because your areas of light dark and shadow on those objects are going to be different from that of the objects that are now white Now, when we look at yours, there's a problem there. If you look at the rim of the cup, this is closest to us. Therefore, the tones in this area is supposed to be stronger, and as you start to go away to the back, it's going to be different. The other question I'm going to ask too, what is the size of the rim of this cup? Is it this thick? Or is it just a design, a painterly design on the rim of the cup? Because I don't get that consistency there in terms of what is happening with the rim of the cup based on how you're using your values. We look at the way you use the shadow for the mug there. Again, that is too light. Should have been a little bit stronger. Similarly here, the spoon. Metallic. Cast shadow. If you're taking the time to pull that line, there are times when your lines have to be stronger and sharper based on what is happening in the composition. And because there's a cast shadow coming from this spoon, when you would have pulled that line there and make it darker, you would have seen what was happening. All of this here could have gone on a little bit more. Because if we were to enter your composition, the first thing that we're going to touch is the spoon. If we draw a line here, it's the closest object to us. So therefore, the strength of the darkness there of the, in the terms of the tones that you use needed to be stronger so that it, it re-emphasizes that importance of letting you know that the spoon is the closest thing to you. Not the saucer, it's the spoon based on how you do it and how you want how do you know when an object is close to you in your arm composition if you draw a, a vertical line an horizontal line sorry across here the objects that are closest to you the lines are often lower and as they go further away it goes up so so this here is the first one the spoon the sauce and the teacup this mug then that mug and how do i know that if i draw a line from the bottom here you see what's happening there that mug starts to happen till about here. And these are conscious decision and conscious problem solving questions and things that you have to look for when you're producing and you're working with a still life composition. It's not just drawing objects. There's a lot of things that's happening in a good still life composition. Do I feel the three dimensionality on the handle here? Not really. Where is the cast shadow from this spoon onto that little teapot there? Not really getting that sense. And are you saying to me that the strength of the shadow or the darkness in this part of the, the mug is a similar is similar to here? Because this one is closest to the lighted side. So even though there's darkness in there, it should not be as dark as this because this one is further away and then you have the cast shadow from this cover happening in there too. So it's, it's inside plus the cast shadow from the cover. That is going to be darker. The strength and the detail that you would have given to the floral design on the mug was necessary, uh, really necessary. Do you need to put it in? Yes, but you shouldn't have given it so much prominence in terms of what you're doing there. This, this could have been toned down a little bit more. And we would have been still able to understand that it's a it's a dark colored or more like a red um, flower based on the strength of the shading and the green leaf. You could have done that same. You could have treated something like that. I'm seeing the cast shadow from the spoon here, but again, something tells me that this part is touching, and then it started uh, thing there. But because of how you'd have treated it, I'm not getting that sense. When we look at this mug, again, 
because it's a wear mug and when you this here is the closest part of the mug to you then your tones here is supposed to be stronger to express that message consistently to us it's not just how you construct it's how you shade you gotta be consistent this rim is closest to us and therefore it should have been treated in that way that we get that sense that it's closer to us can we get that there's a lot of blurry stuff happening here this is where you understand how to use contour lines because sometimes when you're shading you might have overworked an area or you might have made a mistake in that instance a light contour line not just dark throughout but to represent what is going on in terms of how light is affecting your face. so you could have started dark here let it get light come back dark here let it get light come back dark and a little bit of lightness there and then you put a little darkness there and then you go to the back and that would have been that would have made a world of difference in this composition because remember it's coming from around here and then it's coming to the front and this is the closest part to you so it means that the darkness on this area is going to be stronger than there and that's what I mean that when you're shading, your shading must be consistent with the nature and the characteristics of the object that you're shading. And it also must reflect the true um, content of the composition. In this case, the front edge of the mug is closest to us than the back end and this is going to be further. So it's going to require less detail. This one's going to get some more detail. And I can guarantee you, if you go back and you make these changes, you're going to see the big difference it's going to make in your composition. If the glass, this is a transparent object against a dark fabric, you could have toned on this, all of this here. You don't have to use a line. The juxtaposition of the dark tone from the fabric compared to the light area of the glass would have allowed this to stand out and be more forward because this is in front of that fabric. But the way you would have treated this area is suggesting as though it is bracing or it's very, very close to the fabric. And it's not because look where your shadow is. Look where the cast shadow is. So these are little things you have to pay attention to. Because when you don't, they take away from the composition. On the surface level, when you look at a composition like this, it's attractive. I mean, you have a, you organize your objects in a very interesting way. When I draw my dividing axis line, if I draw the line through the third, imaginary line through the third, it's a pretty interesting composition. Teacup might be a little bit too centered along with the mug. But when you take the time to do all of that, and then when it comes to shading, you got have, you have all these inconsistencies happening. It takes away from your work. And it's only when a detailed investigation is done that we see the inconsistency. You see what's going on with the side here. I mean, we, we can clearly differentiate what's going on with, 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 with this section of the mug and we should because this is in front of the fabric and therefore you should if you're struggling with your tone and that's what's happening here then you use your contour lines to assist you have to take time to step back and analyze your own work you have to develop a, a self critiquing kit and that should include you going through the step-by-step -step stages, the things that are supposed to be present. In this case, your checklist should include, okay, I look at my construction. Do I have all the objects constructed properly? Yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with my construction. You double check, ensure things are in proportion, ensure they're in the right place. And then you move on to shading. And when you start to shade, you're looking for your three basic tones first. Your areas of light, your areas of dark, and your areas of shadow. And then you start putting those in. And as you go further into the shading process and you start to add more details, you got to start thinking of the position of the object in the composition and to ensure that the tones that you're using, because you're going to have different areas of cast shadow. The cast shadow from the spoon, the cast shadow from the fabric, the cast shadow from the saucer, the cast shadow from the mug. All of those are cast shadows, but where are they in context of the picture space the cast shadow of the spoon is going to be 
of stronger detail because the spoon is the closest thing to what is in this part of the foreground objects along with the saucer and the teacup so therefore any light and dark areas on these areas are supposed to be stronger than any other part of the composition because that is how you're going to say to your viewers these objects are in the foreground and not just based on where they're positioned but based on how you shade them you're reinforcing that these are foreground objects so my dark areas are darker my shadows areas are darker and my light areas are lighter when you go to the middle ground it will be less so when you go to the background it's even less so so that we can get that sense of distance and spatial relationship and one of the things i often say to students even though from here the, the edge of the spoon to where this mug is might be about six or seven inches think of it in terms of six or seven feet when you're shading and that's always going to make you you're going to solve the problem of, en of ensuring that your tones are consistent with expressing space in your composition because space is also expressed based on the position of the object the fact that this one is overlapping tells us it's in front of the mug but when you're shading, your shading must also be reinforce that. You can't shade and then your shading say this one is in the foreground or this one is in front. And then you have values on this one that is darker. It's contradictory. And that's what's happening with your fabric especially. I'm assuming that the fabric is the same color. And yet still when, you look at what, when we look at how you treated the background, we can swear that the background is a different color fabric than the foreground. And these are the thought processes that you have to keep in mind when you're doing your critical, your self-critique of your work. Step back. Squint your eyes. Are you seeing these things clearly? Because this mug is supposed to stand out a whole lot more. It's fighting in the background. And it shouldn't. The highlighted areas on this area should have been stronger than there. And these are all little things you, you, you could have worked in. If you go closer and we look at the, the, the cover for this particular teapot there. Look what's happening here. All of this area should have been darker. Because you start to move away. As you come around, you're moving away from the source of light. Should have been a little darker. On any tier too. Should have been a little darker. And even if you're saying reflective light, that reflective light is not going to be that strong. And if there's a cast shadow on it here. We're supposed to be able to see that a little clearer too. And this detail breakdown that I'm doing with your work is something that you're supposed to be doing too. And when you do that, it's going to allow you to avoid certain basic fundamental errors and mistakes. And it really adds to the quality of your work. If we were to look at the fold of the fabric, the folds in the fabric, they can be the same because some of them are deeper. Some of them are more shallow. Some of them are more compact and the way you use your tones is supposed to assist the viewers to, to see that right can be the same thing so overall it's it's a good composition but some of those fundamentals that you would have overlooked really take away from the, the strength of the um the finished piece so i would urge you to go back make note of the points that i would have raised pay attention to the values and ensure that when you're shading your shading is representing the true color of the objects and i don't have a photograph so i can't um, be 100 percent. but i know you got some white objects there these here are white objects this is transparent this is going to be silver which means it's going to be a little darker ensure that your, your shading represent the color of the objects accurately ensure your shading are also speaking to where the parts of the object fall in the composition. Foreground things are going to be more detailed, more darker. Backgrounds are going to be lighter. Pay attention to those things. Pay attention to the configuration of your mug. Ensure that it stands a little bit more based on how you construct it with the, with, the, with, the, with the use of tones. And when you make those simple adjustments, resubmit or show me the corrected version of the, um, based on the things that I would have said. And I can guarantee you that the work is going to be so much better and stronger than this one here. Is this your best piece? No. Is it a good piece? Yes. But we're not striving in this class. We're not looking for, for, for good pieces. We're looking for you to produce the best that you can produce. And when you take into consideration all of those points that I make, and you have those points in the back of your head when you're doing your self-critique, 
these errors that I'm highlighting would not be consistent and you need to ensure that you go back, pay attention to those things and avoid them in the future. I thank you for sharing.